Good morning, folks. I don't know what the story is. I don't know. Maybe it's this season. Maybe it's summertime, and and it it just the weather. It makes people ask this question. But I'm getting a lot of questions lately about background reports, FBI reports. People are writing to me and saying, Don, what about you know this? I have this on my record. I have this felony. I have this arrest and so forth. And they asked me, you know, is there a chance that I will be denied my visa? So when I come back, we're gonna talk about this. Hey. Oh, rocket chick, Roger. Hello there. I think I might have mentioned this once before that it seems like it's really difficult sometimes to get information around here. And finding out information about background checks proved to be one of those things, okay? I searched online and I, I found it very difficult to get real reliable information about what can be on your FBI report that could cause you to be denied access into Ecuador. Okay. Uh, I know from talking to people for certain that there's, I know that if you have a murder conviction that you're not going to get in. There are certain financial crimes that if you've been convicted of those, you're probably going to be denied access. A lot of the times people get denied access for just mistakes in their paperwork. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about trying to respond to a couple of people who have written to me that were concerned about their FBI report. I was concerned about my FBI report because I had a couple of DUIs. I'll tell you right up front that I had two of them in my life. One of them was, was I, I fought and I beat, and so there was no conviction on that. The other one I didn't beat, and I paid the price and, and paid, you know, did my, pay, paid my fine and did my one day in jail, and that took care of that. But I also had a felony arrest from 1973 for writing a hot check. Actually, I wrote more than one. I wrote 900 and something dollars worth of 10 and 20 dollar checks because in those days you could just walk into 7 Eleven with your checkbook. If you had your checkbook, you had money. You know, because it was so easy just to cash a check at any convenience store. And I went on a spending spree and I got caught. And it was uh, eventually it was completely dismissed took several years to get that expunged from my record, but the arrest is still there. I, I, I know a couple of people here in Ecuador that were denied access uh, because of information on their FBI report. I don't know what the details were. It's none of my business. I could have found out. I could have asked a certain somebody, but I'm better off personally by not knowing because let's face it, I'm a blabbermouth. I'll tell you anything I know. And in this particular case, I didn't want to know. Uh, one person that was denied and asked to leave the country was a sort of a friend of mine, not real close, but let me just say he was an acquaintance, okay? So anyway, so what I did, I mean, you know, and, and folks, you know, you know how I feel about giving advice and my best advice in regards to how can you be, have that warm and fuzzy feeling about your FBI background check when you're trying to get entry into Ecuador and try to get a visa. The best advice I have for you is to talk to an immigration lawyer and be up front about your report and just do it before you come here. 
if you get an honest attorney, which most likely you will, they'll tell you that may be a problem. I wrote to one of my attorneys, one of my attorneys, <laughs> I, I know two attorneys here in Ecuador that I, actually I know three, that I kind of keep in touch with and ask for advice and ask questions once in a while when I want to be sure about an answer I'm giving. But anyway, I wrote to this attorney and asked her, you know, it was a, a, what, what is it that can be on an FBI report that can cause you to get denied a visa for living in Ecuador. She didn't give me any specific answer. I'm going to read to you what she wrote to me, okay? It's a little short paragraph, so bear with me, because I know there are some people that are going to want to know this, okay? She wrote this, and I quote, According to the Ecuadorian law, one, she, she, she actually quoted Reclam, Reclamento L-O-M-H Article 58. One of the main requirements to obtain a visa is a certificate of not registering a criminal record from the country of origin or in which the person had resided during the last five years. In this certificate, if this certificate shows the existence of a criminal record, the competent body of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Human Mobility may require more information. To do this, the foreign person may be called in for an interview in which he will have to document the reasons why he has a criminal record. You notice they, they always say he. <laughs> After the interview, a report will be made containing the decision of the authority to grant or deny the visa based on the provisions of the organic law of human mobility, comma, regarding the power of the Ecuadorian state to grant or deny a visa to a foreign person. In addition to this, the ministry officers use other portions of the law to establish in which cases a visa cannot be granted, L-O-M-H Article 79. Inadmissibility of granting the naturalization letter. That's what that LOMH Article 79 is. The letter of naturalization cannot be granted after a resolution motivated by the following reasons. Having received an enforceable conviction for any of the crimes indicated in the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court or for any crime provided for in Ecuadorian law, whose present sentence is greater than five years. So I think from my, the way I interpret this, simply put, and this is just my, my opinion, okay? If you're convicted of a crime that resulted in more years of, more than five years of incarceration, uh, you're probably going to be denied access. So I'm going to say again, okay? Don't don't base your decision on what I'm telling you here in this video. Talk to an immigration lawyer. Write to him and just say, hey, look, I have this problem. I had this conviction. I spent this amount of time in jail or prison, whatever. Just be up front and tell them and find out before you get here. Believe me, you don't want to come here and be here on a temporary you know, tourist visa, settle into a, a lease on an apartment and have your stuff here and then find out that you can't get a visa. That's a big expense, folks, because they don't mess around. If they deny you, they give you X number of days to get out of the country. My acquaintance, according to what I was told, was given 30 days to leave, and he had he, he had to leave. So, I hope that puts your mind at ease for some of you. Like I said, I had some things on my background check that I was concerned about. When I came here, I didn't have to go for an interview. But what I did have to do was I had to provide a power of attorney for because I was in Mancha and my attorney was in, which is Gringo Visa, was in Cuenca. I had to provide a power of attorney authorizing 
her to go in on my behalf. And I don't know what was said. I don't know what questions were asked. I don't know anything about it. I just know that I was accepted and I was I, I got my visa. I do know from talking to some other people that had to go in for an interview that basically it's you sit down face to face with an immigration official and you explain yourself and you explain yourself and you explain and you, you, you say, I'm going to be a good boy. You know, if I was going to have to go for an interview, I would have said I was down and out and I was broke and I was homeless and I didn't have any money. And I took a chance on getting a job and being able to pay back for the money that I essentially stole by writing hot checks. But that was a very long time ago. You know, and I've not done anything like that since then, and my record proves it. So I hope that helps you. If you have any questions about your FBI report, and folks, if you want to confide in me and tell me what your concern is, I'll help you out as much as I can by getting the information for you. Okay, but please plan on talking to an attorney. Talk to one here, here in Ecuador. If you need some attorneys, yeah, I'll give you, well, I'll tell you what, in the description, I'll list two of the attorneys that I recommend. One here in Monta, one in, in Cuenca. They both have offices all over the country. And it's like I've always said, I'll give you some people that you can go and talk to. You can pick the one you like. Okay? So that's it. That's it for this video. I hope you uh, like this channel. If you do, please subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, bite me, like I always say. And I say that with love in my heart. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao. Papa. Papa. Mamá. Mamá. Aguacate. Aguacate. Parangaricutirimícuaro. <laughs>